What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of GP's Library. Today I'm back with another book review. I've been recently doing a lot more, or a lot of memoirs. I read a lot of memoirs, a lot of storytellers, a lot of stuff like that. A lot of like literary nonfiction as well. But today I am going to present a book that I actually learned something from. So if you're not interested in learning, you may not be interested in this episode, but I think it's very interesting. And the book that I am presenting you guys with is How Google Works. And this book was written by Eric Schmidt and Jonathan Rosenberg. Eric Schmidt, I believe, yeah, Eric Schmidt is the former CEO of Google and Jonathan Rosenberg is the former senior vice president of products. So they were high up in the, the Google sphere, working with Larry Page, leading Google and growing in the early 2000s or earlier in the 2000s. So they obviously are good people to say how Google works and how Google works, obviously, it's not from a user side. This isn't obvious. Sorry, I didn't mean to say obvious is like something demeaning or something, but because it wasn't completely clear to me when I bought the book. I was open for it to be talking about how to best utilize Google because I don't really read a lot of the <laughs> background or anything like that before I buy a book. I kind of do judge books by their cover, to be honest, more than I probably should. But this book is actually about the inner workings and the business workings of Google as a company and kind of how they started, how they've kept a lot of the same culture and how they've um, kept growing through being so multinational with so many employees, with so many levels of management, how they've managed that. So this book is definitely, I'll get to who it's for towards the end, but to start, it's definitely for like potential entrepreneurs, people who are interested in being entrepreneurs, not just in the tech space, but definitely if you wanna be an entrepreneur in the tech space. So how Google works. I have the hardcover here. So I did read the physical copy of it and I read it June 28th, 2023, or that's when I finished it. So I didn't finish it too long ago, but I read some books after that and I've been realizing how few details I remember from some of the books. Some of the books I have to damn near like browse back through to do some of these videos because it's been so long and some books I feel like you grab like one good thing from it and that's good enough for me. If I grab like one big takeaway from a book, I am satisfied. But this book was one that had so many good pieces but so much stuff that I would apply to if I was starting a business. But I really think could be self applicable as well. So to get into my first main takeaway, it is do what you know. Google, when they started, they knew that they wouldn't always just be a search engine company because search engine isn't very profitable. It's not that easy. They have done a good job through ad revenue and ad sharing and stuff like that to make it profitable, but they knew that that wasn't going to be the only thing that made money for Google and the thing that was going to help them win over the complete market share, which they didn't have obviously when they first started. So they went with what they knew. They knew search, they knew the search bar, they knew how to best order your different query searches and stuff like that, which is revolutionary at the time. So they attacked that and they grew from there. I really took that away. <laughs> like go with what you know, attack what you know, attack your skill set, use the good things that you have to your advantage. And then or and at the same time, look for opportunities to continue growing in different directions. Google has managed to do that as like a living and breathing company. And we can do that for ourselves. We can always like attack our strong suits. And then some of the side things we can still pick up. But if we know what we do well, and we do well what we're meant to do well, I think a lot of good can come from that. And Google is a living testament, at least as a company, that that can work. My next main takeaway, piggybacking, piggybacking off of the last one, is to be ready for the next opportunity. So... When Google had the opportunity to buy other companies or to merge with other companies or to not really merge, but to acquire other companies and to acquire new technologies to install in their current technologies, 
they had the infrastructure and the flexible enough workspaces and the hard enough working engineers and the steady enough leadership to adopt those things and keep moving in the right direction. Not to allow that to run their culture into the ground, to completely change what they do, or to alter Google negatively at all for the most part. And they knew when to cut stuff loose when it wasn't working. But that's a, a different takeaway, but just be prepared. But that is a part of preparation. Be prepared for what you want to come next, what those next goals are. Start preparing while you're working on what you're good at and doing that well. I think this book is what introduced me to the idea of the smart creative, of the high IQ person who has the flexibility to bend in different roles, who has the flexibility to grow as an employee and get to the next level, who has the mental flexibility and intelligence to not just to be autonomous even, to make decisions and make them in a way that follows a certain culture and a certain moral standard because they want to and because that's how they feel and because, I mean, because you pay them well enough to. This book really introduces that and the type of people that Google wants to keep in their offices and the type of people who ascend up their ladder and that and type of importance they place on um, their engineers and on the people who know what they're talking about. They take great value in their employees and they take great value in seemingly in their employees, not just being smart, but also being able to creatively think up solutions and creatively and autonomously handle some of these solutions. Another main takeaway is an organization or a business mirrors its leaders. So Larry Page being willing to defer to other people and a lot of other leaders in Google not necessarily making choices off of ego or making choices off of or with no data, making choices off of emotion, but making choices off of the right decision and speaking with the right people and deferring to the right people, that's extremely important. And when the bosses can lead and follow People will see that both things go hand in hand. It's not a competition when everybody's on the same team. And seemingly Google's really gotten that down, that they're not competing inside. Although I'm sure the lower, level, lower levels of employees are competing, like even the sales team and stuff like that, I'm sure it's competitive, don't get me wrong, but they're all working to make Google a better place. So who's this book for? Once again, it is for people who would think of themselves as smart creatives, like whether that is within an organization or you want to be an entrepreneur or anything like that. If you are a creative who wants to um, still be informed, wants to still keep learning, but wants to also create new things, I think this is a good book as something that most of the smart creatives have their own organizations also whether they're like entrepreneurs, I think it was called in business school, to where like you kind of are self-sufficient and a leader within another organization, or you're an entrepreneur to where you just have your own business, you still responsible for other people's careers, still responsible for being creative and still responsible for growing things. Google has done it for like 30 years. So I think they know what they're doing at this point. If you're curious about how the internet evolved, like the internet that you use at home currently day to day, how some of these different apps evolved, how some of them came about but then went away, how some of them are profitable, not profitable, how some of them are used, or you may have loved it, but not enough people loved it, how it got scrapped, and how it's in different departments. If you're just curious about how um, the internet world that was built for you <laughs> exists, you know, built for all these users, all of us exist. Google was a big part in that, obviously. So if you want to learn about that, this is a good book to read. And then I kind of name these people, any, but any business leaders, there's some really good advice in here on just leadership skills and leadership tendencies of other companies that 
has led them to not be as successful as Google and things being super ego driven and there's just good business advice in here. So if you plan on being a business leader ever one day or a current one, I think there's a lot of good information in here. And I like to leave you with my kind of walking away and what I think I personally and took the most and it's for sure the do it you know. Like you can always kind of dream up what you could be doing in the future. But right now you can only do what you know to do. So if you do that and you keep expanding what you know, what you do is going to also expand. So that's what I'm going forward with. That's what I've gone forward with since I finished this last summer. Guys, it's been another episode of GP's Library. How Google works, definitely, definitely. A book for people who are curious about organizations, leadership, and evolving your mind and kind of a company at the same time. Guys, it's been another episode. Go pick up a book. I'll see you guys next time.